Welcome back everyone to the Dark Forest. Tonight's video is all my favorite allegedly true dogman sightings and encounters. I hope you enjoy, stay safe, and click that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Hello Zach. I figured I would send this story over to you as you cover this topic quite often. This occurrence happened to me back in high school when I was visiting my cousins for the summer. I originally lived in northern Georgia, in the suburbs about 20 minutes northeast of Atlanta. My cousins lived in northeastern Texas. I won't give the specific city that they're from, just for privacy's sake, but I will tell you about this encounter. I was 15, turning 16 at the time. I'm 24 now, so this was quite a ways back. My cousins and their family owned a few acres out in the middle of nowhere to be precise. They were having a bonfire out this one evening in the backyard, if you'd call it a backyard, as their dad was grilling up some food on their Weber. They even allowed us to have a beer, one each. They said they'd rather know about it and have them drink with them if we really were that curious than to go off and party somewhere and get in some kind of trouble. It wasn't my first beer, of course. I was 15 at the time. But it was the first time that my family actually acknowledged it and let us drink together with them. We were all having a good time that night. We were eating food that my uncle was cooking up. We all sipped on our beer to make it last as long as possible. Well, at least, that's what I was doing. Because after that, that was it. Water or soda was the only option. After everyone had finished eating, we were just telling ghost stories and joking around the fire pit. At this time, I believe the time was between 10 and midnight. I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't really paying attention, but I knew it was pretty late. Some time afterwards, my aunt and uncle called it a night, and myself, my cousin, and my little sister were all that was left outside around the fire. They were not the original owners of this property. My cousin told me that there's this creepy barn that's out in their backyard in the outskirts somewhere in the woods, and they had no idea who had originally built it or what the purpose of it was. At that very moment, I remember my sister and I were very intrigued and we wanted to check it out. It was already pretty late, but I think that was the whole reason that my cousin brought it up. He wanted to spook us out. He told us to hold on, he went inside and he picked up some flashlights from his bedroom, I'm assuming, and brought them back outside to the backyard. He only had two flashlights, so he handed one to me and then my cousin had one for himself. My cousin was a couple years older than me and my sister was younger than I was, so she pretty much stayed to my side the whole way. My cousin guided us into the woods, longer and farther than I ever expected it would have been. After a while, I thought he was completely bluffing, because it seemed like at least an hour had passed by, but in all reality, it was probably only about 15 minutes. But sure enough, there it was. In the distance in the dense woods, we could see this large barn-like structure. It was already completely pitch black outside, but as we shined our flashlights onto the structure, we could see how incredibly old and worn it was. This barn was older than their house, at least it appeared to be that way. It was basically falling apart. I remember thinking to myself then for a quick second, how in the hell is this structure even intact at this very moment? The thing's tilting, and it's barely holding on. At that point, I believe we were probably about 40 feet away from it. As we slowly approached, I got a sudden shiver down my spine. I felt like we were being watched, and for a 15 year old that's something you just don't want to admit to other people, especially your siblings. We all stopped in unison when we heard the noises. It sounded like things being tossed over or broken, or something large that was moving around inside knocking things over. I remember asking my cousin, Is somebody in there? Do you got some people living in your shack? It almost sounded like I was saying it as a joke, but I was really worried. I got even more tense when my cousin didn't even reply my question. Joke or not, we couldn't keep our eyes off of what we saw next. The barn door was cracked halfway open. I started to slowly backtrack at that point. I knew that someone or something was definitely inside that shack. A part of me thought maybe it was just some rodent or local wildlife that made it its home, and that I was just freaking out for no reason. But that all changed when I saw the eyes. 
deep inside the blackness of that half-open doorway, we saw these red beady glowing eyes in the distance from within. It was pretty hard to even see in the darkness with our flashlights, as we were still kind of far off from the shack. And with those red glowing eyes, we saw the slight silhouette of something peeking out from the darkness, something scruffy with blackish gray fur, and with the head shaped of some type of giant dog. It was almost impossible to see, and there was no way in hell I was continuing to walk forward. We were all walking backwards at this point, with our flashlights still pointed at the shack. I remember whispering to my cousin right beside me, You got wolves over here? He finally responded to me, after a moment of silence from before. He told me, Then there's no wolves here in Texas. Then what the hell is it? I said out loud. My sister was already sobbing, holding my shirt really tightly. At that point, we all turned around and we booked it the hell out of there back to his house. We didn't sleep that night. We pretty much just hanged out in his room and just talked about that whole situation. We talked about werewolves and all kinds of other forest creatures that we could think of. But by the end of the night, we pretty much all agreed to a dogman. Last spring, my friends from college and I were hiking in western North Carolina at the Smoky Mountains. We all lived and went to school over in Asheville, and we enjoyed the wildlife and just getting out in nature. Every now and then we would plan a camping trip, but primarily hiking was more of our thing. We were on the trail for the Deep Creek Indian Creek Loop, which is about 5 miles. There was an option for a shorter route, which is only 2.5 miles, but we never took that. This was one of our favorite trails. There are plenty to go around out here in the Smokies, but this one was one of our favorites because of the waterfall. We absolutely thought it was gorgeous. There was even a nice little wooden bridge in the area as well. This is a very touristic area. People like to go tubing out here and camping, and this trail doesn't allow pets, so you don't have to worry about stepping in nothing. I'm not an animal person, so if that isn't obvious by now, now it is. Sometime during the hike, we stopped to have some lunch. We found a nice little clearing area that we figured we could sit down at and lay out a sheet that we had brought in one of our backpacks. This trail is quite unique because it doesn't get a lot of snow in the winter time, and it's a nice place that's a lower elevation. After we wrapped up our lunch, we headed back onto the trail to finish the loop. As we were wrapping things up, we probably had another 15 minute walk, if that. We started hearing these weird noises echoing amongst the trees to our left behind us. We all assumed it was just wildlife, as you're in the wild, you're on a hiking trail in the Smoky Mountains. We have black bears, deer, and tons of everything else. But as the rustling got louder, as if it was getting closer, we started to get a little spooked, so we started the walk just a little bit faster. At this point, it started grunting. Whatever it was was sounding like it was very agitated or pissed off. We started hearing branches or twigs snapping. Whatever it was, it was definitely following us. We all knew that at that point. I was pretty spooked, not even gonna lie, but I think we all were in all honesty. As we continued our faster pace, I quickly glanced behind us as one of the snaps was louder than usual and I figured something was right on top of us. There was nothing behind us, but I swear, in the corner of my eye on the distance behind some brush, I saw this large, black, furish-like creature running across the area. It totally spooked me. At first I thought it was a bear. First you see it, then you don't. But this thing was quick. I mean, really fast. And it seemed like it was running on its back hind legs, as it was pretty tall, and there's no way that it could be on all fours at that height. I didn't get much of a look at it, but it was definitely not a bear. It totally freaked me the hell out, and I told my friends about it as we got closer towards the car. Whatever it was, never showed its true form nor attacked us. But still, I always wondered to this day, what the hell did I see in those woods? Two years ago, my wife and I took a trip to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, because that is where she and her family is originally from. I am from Ohio, but we met in college and married a couple years after that. We were spending a week on vacation over at her mother's house. 
After a few days of relaxing and barbecuing and going out the restaurants, we wanted to go on a couple of hiking spots that she remembered going to back in her youth. She took me to this cute little hiking area called Lake Martin Loop Trail, which surrounded the Lake Martin area. If you call it a lake, it's more like a swamp. Hell, the whole damn state is a swamp. I don't mind a good hike, but I despise swamps and I am deadly scared of alligators. So being in Louisiana, even for just a week, was something I was not fond of. And going on this trail, she promised me that it was completely safe and there was this large wooden bridge that overlooked everything and it was gorgeous. Which it was. My wife was not lying. That was until I saw something out there that I had never seen before. As we were walking across this wooden bridge, my wife was just doing something on her phone, probably texting somebody. I was walking beside her facing the water and the dirt's edge. When all of a sudden, a little ways out by the water's edge, I saw this large black mass pop up slowly from the water. Whatever this thing was, was big. It wasn't a bear. It wasn't an alligator for sure. It was black, or at least a dark grayish color, and it was covered in head to toe in fur. At first, I thought it was a giant wolf of some kind. It was definitely not a coyote because this thing was huge. I stopped in my tracks and just watched it. It slowly exited the water, shaking itself dry like a dog would. It was definitely some kind of canine, but nothing that I've ever seen before. Then, it jumped up on its back hind legs with its tail dragging against the ground and raced out of there into the brush disappearing within seconds. By the time I motioned for my wife to look, it was gone. She had never seen a thing, but I did. I don't know what the hell it was, but I'm damn sure it was no wolf. When I was a kid, I went RV camping all the time with my family. It was a tradition that we did at least twice a year. I grew up in northern Mississippi, so most of our camping trips that I could remember were within the state line. Our family was a family of six. My mother and father, and my three other siblings and myself. We were a large family, so usually when we went to these RV campgrounds, my dad always had a tent that he would lay out for some of the kids to sleep in. This encounter story happened over at the Pine Grove Campground near Bay Springs Lake. It really was a wonderful place, as I've been there quite a few times with my family. People go fishing out there, canoeing, camping, bonfires, you name it. It's really a great family environment. My oldest brother stayed in the RV the night of the occurrence, as myself and my two younger siblings, as I'm a middle child, stayed in the tent right outside the entrance of the RV. I have no clue what time it was, but it was in the middle of the night as I was awoken by the sounds. At first, it just sounded like some twigs snapping. Local wildlife, no big deal. But then so did the weird animalistic sounds of something breathing. Then, I started hearing this pounding noise outside like something was banging on some nearby trees. Eventually, my siblings woke up beside me, totally freaked out. I told them the to hush and just listen, and that's what we did. Over time, the noises seemed to be getting louder, so whatever it was was getting closer to our spot. I don't know how much time had passed, but the louder the sounds became, the more freaked out we got. We were too scared to open the zipper to look outside. We had no clue what it was. Maybe it was a prank, but maybe it wasn't. We weren't gutsy enough to find out. Eventually, the adrenaline calmed down and the sounds disappeared. We fell back asleep, the following morning explaining everything to our parents. Neither one of them believed us, of course, nor did my older brother. But still, I remember that night. I don't know what it was. But in a way, I never want to find out either. This occurrence happened to me when I was a kid. I don't have the fondest memory of every little detail, but I do remember some parts of it. My family and I are from Hardin, Kentucky, which is in the western part of the state. We were at the Wranglers Campground, which is betterly known as the land between the lakes. Now as an adult, finding out all these different stories about this area that I knew nothing about as a kid. It still gives a shiver down my spine to this day, and I have yet to return. 
This camp was no ordinary camp. They had horses, and lots of them. Some people stayed at the lodge, some people just came to ride the horses and go on the trails. When we had went there, we weren't staying at the lodge, we were just there for the horseback riding. Everything was so beautiful. It happened to be my first time even being on a horse back then. The view of the trees and the water, everything was perfect. As we were on the trail, I happened to be one of the last horses that was on the trail on the tour. I didn't really know how to ride a horse to begin with, but still, it started to go off course and that's when everybody kind of stopped and was staring at me. My horse was going nuts. Something had spooked it. I saw something in those woods. I have no idea at the time what it was. It was large, black, and full of fur. It was behind us and it was spooking my horse. I barely got a glance at it. I barely even noticed it to begin with, so I didn't think anything of it at the time. In all reality, I thought it was probably just a black bear. But a black bear wouldn't have spooked my horse like that. And black bears don't run on their back hind legs either. When I did see it, it was only for a brief second, but it darted off into the woods as soon as it seemed to have noticed that I saw it. After the tour, I remember telling my parents about it. They brushed it off and just said, you just saw a black bear, no big deal, and it spooked the horse. But now, as an adult doing history on this location, I know it was probably something else. Back in the summer of 2019, I was camping with a couple of buddies of mine in southwestern Kentucky. All of us are from Lexington, Kentucky, but we like to venture off pretty far out for camping trips. I was never one to feel that camping close by where you lived really meant you were really camping, so we always did our research to find some areas that were at least a two-hour drive away. Our trip ended at Eureka Campground, which is right there at the land between lakes. Yes, we've heard the rumors, by the way. Of course, we didn't believe anything. We're pretty much skeptics. Let me rephrase that. We were skeptics. Aside from camping, the main thing that we like to do when we are going camping is to do some fishing. We're pretty simple folk, and there's nothing like having a couple of brews and fishing until the sunset. The Cumberland River is beautiful, and that's the reason why we wanted to check the place out. This story happened, our first and only trip out that direction to go camping. Once we had arrived, we set up our tents, all our food supplies on the picnic bench, and got everything ready for an early lunch. After we had wrapped up lunch, we just hung around and shoot the shit a little bit debating if we wanted to do fishing that day or the day after, as we were planning on staying out there for three nights. Eventually, we all agreed that we were going to do some fishing the following day. The first night was just going to be a relaxing one. I had brought all the fine necessities for some great s'mores for that evening's fire. I had a portable Weber grill that I had packed on the back of my truck along with everything else. Once the charcoal was set up and it was steaming hot, it was time to get the burgers on. Once we wrapped up dinner, the sun was starting to set and we knew that we only had so much time before the day was gone. Then, night would be upon us. After lounging around for many hours in our lawn chairs, I knew that it was time to get the fire roaring before the night came. As the beautiful assortment of colors bloomed above us in the sky, I knew we were on limited time. I told my buddies I'd be right back. I was going to go grab some firewood and get things rocking in the pit. I don't recall what either one of them were doing at that present time, but it is irrelevant, I guess. I remember peeking inside my tent into my backpack to grab my mag flashlight, just in case it got dark while I was still out there searching for firewood. Looking back now, it seems kind of silly as we had purchased some firewood to begin with, but me, I wanted more. For some reason, I thought we were going to be up all night drinking, and that we would run out and then really be screwed. Which, in reality, more than likely, that may have happened. So I start venturing off of the camping sites. I didn't want these twigs that were just already on the ground. Little skinny things that weren't going to do much in the pit anyways. I wanted to go deeper out, away from everybody else, to find some real wood. That, and I didn't want anybody telling me that I couldn't do it. I just wanted to do it on my own without being seen. 
I walked in through the tree line and into the dense forest. I don't know how big this forest area was, but being alone out there when it was starting to get dark, it was big enough for me. I felt a sudden drop in temperature the moment that I got into the shaded area. At first, I didn't have any eerie feelings or felt like I was being watched at all. Everything was completely normal. After about the first five minutes, I found a couple decent-sized logs. As I was carrying them with my left hand, I had the flashlight on my right just beaming the area, looking for the good hunt. And then, out of nowhere during that time frame is when I noticed it. I didn't hear anything around me, outside of my breathing and my own footsteps. I didn't hear any crickets, no birds chirping, nothing. It was like somebody muted the remote control on the forest. I really didn't pay it any mind. I'm not even going to lie to everybody. But in the back of my mind, I knew something was a little bit off. I found a couple of more good-sized logs, sticks if you will, and I figured that was enough for the first run. Since I was out there alone and I didn't volunteer either one of my friends to go with me, I figured I could always just go back in for a round two if needed. As I made my descent back towards in the direction whence I came back to the campsite, I started hearing these weird noises somewhere off behind me echoing amongst the woods. At first, it didn't really creep me out. I figured maybe it was a squirrel, maybe a raccoon, maybe it was a coyote, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of life in the woods. But as a couple of minutes had passed, the noises seemed to be getting louder, like something was following me. I lost count how many times I got spooked and turned around to see nothing at all. But eventually, the last time I did turn around, I did see something. Somewhere off in the brush behind some trees, in the dense blackness of the now forest, were these red glowing eyes from something taller than myself, and I'm five foot ten. The silhouette of this thing was barely recognizable. The only thing that I saw with my flashlight in the darkness was its face. Its canine dog looking face but its eyes i've never seen an animal with red glowing eyes before i didn't think coyotes or wolves or anything of that nature had red glowing eyes the only red-eyed animals i ever knew of were bunnies and rats but it just stood there watching me it didn't move an inch it was pretty far off and it never chased me thank god it was almost like it was observing me. Maybe it was curious, I don't know. But I literally saw it for two seconds, maybe three. It felt like an eternity. Fight or flight mode kicked in. And right after that, I dropped the logs and I hightailed it out of there as quickly as possible. I would be lying to you if I told you that I wasn't screaming. Because I was. A 37-year-old male screaming like a little sissy. I'll admit it, but you know what? I don't care. I was terrified. A couple of minutes, I'm assuming, had passed, and I got back to my campsite. I tried explaining everything to my friends what I had seen in the woods. They weren't really sure what to take of it at first. At first, I'm sure they thought I was just BSing them, but they knew by my reaction and the tears from my eyes that I wasn't kidding around. I told them I wanted to leave. I'm not staying here. I don't care if we have to drive a couple hours somewhere else, or even drive home for that matter. I want out of here now. It took a few minutes of convincing, but eventually we packed everything back up in my truck and we got out of there. I think they were a little disappointed and pissed off, especially my friend James. He was already halfway drunk and he was just starting to enjoy the night. I don't care what anybody tells you about the LBL. I saw something out in those woods. And I'm thankful to God that it never attacked me. But it does exist. Zach, I'm sending you this quick little story as I only remember certain parts of it as I was a kid when this had occurred. But it does occur around the land between lakes in northwestern Tennessee. I'm originally from Clarksville, which is just east of the LBL. My family would often take camping trips and boating trips out that direction. It's always been a myth about the local dogman in that area, yet we have never seen anything in person, but everybody knows the rumors. 
my family would always do RV camping trips and they would hook up their little fishing boat to the back on a trailer. Myself, I didn't really care for it. It was never really my thing. I was more of a city boy. I liked video games and skateboarding. But my family always insisted that we get out and did family events together. My family event idea would be Comic-Con, but who am I? This particular spring, we were at the LBL. My dad had reserved a spot over at Piney Campground in the town of Dover. The first night, everything was completely normal. I was bored out of my mind, being the only child and forced to go somewhere for a couple of nights that I had no interest in being at. A typical spoiled brat if you ask me, but hey, I was a kid back then. On the second night of the camping RV expedition with my family, my mom and dad wanted to do a little bit of fishing on their little boat that they had. I had no interest in going. I said I was just going to hang back and hang out by the edge of the water and watch them. I just wanted to chill and relax and hang my feet over the boat dock. Playing my Game Boy was much more fun than fishing. Yes, I said Game Boy, so you could realistically see how far back this story goes. I don't recall what time it was. It was still daylight, but you could tell that it was on its way out. My mom and dad had been out there for well over an hour, and I was getting bored out of my mind. I remember putting my Game Boy in my back jeans pocket and just walked around the site. I had nowhere to be, I didn't know where I was, and I just wanted to walk around and explore the area. It's not like they could have told me no, they were on a boat. I ventured off into the nearby woods. They didn't seem like they were scary or that dense, but I was a young teen at the time, 13 to be exact, and I was pretty adventurous. While I was walking around in those woods, I startedly had a change of heart. I really felt like something was watching me out in the woods, and I couldn't tell why I had that feeling at all, but I just knew it, deep down inside my gut. After about 15, maybe 20 minutes of bullcrapping, I decided to head back towards camp. On my way out, I started hearing these crazy sounds, like something was throwing something in my direction. Rocks? Sticks? I don't know, but I heard it shuffling amongst the trees, and landing with hard thuds on the dirt below. Every time I would hear those noises, I would quickly turn around, totally freaked out, but I wouldn't see anything but the moving branches in the distance, and it wasn't the wind. Then, I heard the gnarling howl, a howl that I have never heard before on anything but the movies. It was no coyote, and whatever was making those noises wasn't terribly far from me, I could tell you that. It sounded like a very angry and aggressive wolf. But there's no wolves here, and it was no coyote like I mentioned before. I heard heavy breathing after the howl, and I knew whatever it was was right next to me. I freaked the hell out and ran so fast, still being cautious. I didn't want to trip on any tree roots or any vines or boulders or anything of the sort. I wanted the hell out of there as soon as possible. I had never been so terrified in my entire life. I ran and ran, and eventually I made it back to my parents' RV. I got inside, completely out of breath and about to pass out, locking the door behind me. I made sure all the windows were locked too. I just laid there on the floor, putting my back against the cupboards in the kitchen section, about to hyperventilate. I remember thinking back then, what the hell was that thing? What the hell was that thing? I didn't even see a thing. I just heard it, and I, I felt its presence. But that was enough for me. Absolutely, 100%, that was enough for me. I didn't need to see the beast to know what was out there. I never left that RV until my parents came inside, wondering where I was because they assumed I was going to stay on the docks. I tried to explain myself to them, but they didn't believe me. I didn't see anything. They said I was being paranoid and my imagination was getting the best of me. Long story short, I never left the RV unless my parents were nearby. And even then, it was only around the fire pit when it had gotten dark. That was the worst camping trip ever. As I mentioned before, I was never a fan of camping to begin with. And still, I'm certainly not a fan to this day. Back in 2016, my brother and I rented out this Shiloh little cabin at Dixieland Cabins. 
which is kind of right off the southwestern part of the Cumberland River. It was a nice little single bed bass fishing cabin that sleeps up to two people. It was perfect for my brother and I. We've always been big in the fishing, as our father was really into it as we were little. This story actually happened while I was having a cigarette on the back porch. Not much of a story, but I figured I would submit it to you because you would know what to do with it. If memory serves me correctly, my brother was taking a deuce at the time. I was having one last smoke before we were going to hop in the truck to get to the fishing spot that we wanted to go to for that day. We had booked this little cabin for two nights. For a hundred bucks a pop, it really wasn't a big deal. It was basically a hundred bucks from each one of us. It had a bed, an AC unit in the wall, and a microwave. That's all we really needed outside of the toilet. We were going to be outdoors going fishing anyways. It was really nothing special. If I remember correctly, it was the cheapest model that they offered. While I was out having my cigarette, out in the distance in the trees. Now mind you, there's other cabins out here, but still, this was right by the tree line. I saw this large black mass of something peeking out. At first, I thought it was just the shade of the trees. But as I took another puff of my cigarette and kind of looked harder, I noticed this shade had glowing eyes. They were red. Dark crimson red. And it looked like they were looking in my direction. I just stood there shocked. I didn't know what to take of it. Was it a bear? Was it a wolf? Was it a cougar? I had no idea. It was kind of far out, so there was really no telling what it was. But when this black figure moved and disappeared right in front of my eyes, I knew it wasn't the shade. There was something large and full of black fur standing out there peeking outside the tree line, then just disappearing in a flash. I don't know exactly what I saw out there in the distance, but with the rumors about this place, I could take a pretty wild guess. Bumpus Mills has to be the coolest campground that we ever went to. That was, until this story occurred, of course. It was a great place with water access to bring out your boat, do a little canoeing, do some fishing, and it's very family and pet friendly. It was always our go-to place for many years. Our kids would love to get in the water with their little life vests on and practice their little doggy paddles with the dog beside them having fun splashing each other. I'd always have the most fun cooking up the grill, having a smoke, and just relaxing with a beer in my hand. My wife would always enjoy doing all the prep work and getting all the spices ready for every meal that we had there, while she listened to her audiobooks on her phone on speaker. She did all the spicing and the marinating, and I did all the grilling, and the kids just had a blast. It really is a great place, and I would highly recommend it, if this did not happen. On the second night of our trip... My wife and I awoke to some weird sounds outside of our camping spot. It didn't sound directly right outside, but somewhere close within the vicinity. It sounded like things were getting tossed around, thrown on the ground. We heard shuffling noises, like something was walking. Something heavy, and with purpose. My natural instinct was someone was trying to rob us or take our stuff that we left outside. I remember getting up and looking out the window of our small little RV. I didn't see anything. It was completely pitch black outside. The only thing that was halfway lit was the remaining embers inside the fire pit. I stood there for countless minutes just looking and observing, only to see nothing at all. I lost track of time, but as time went, the less I got freaked out and figured maybe it happened at somebody else's location, not at ours still half asleep on zombie status, lowering the blinds and walking back to bed. The following morning, nothing out of the usual. My wife was preparing breakfast for the kids as they were still asleep. I put on a flannel and some slippers and I grabbed a cigarette and went outside the RV to have a quick smoke. As I was walking around outside having a puff or two, that's when I saw something on a nearby tree. Three huge scratch marks in the tree at least five and a half, maybe six feet high. It wasn't something that was cut with a knife. It couldn't have been a prank. They were huge, at least an inch thick deep on the bark. Was it a bear? Who knows? I don't think so, at least. That 
in the footprints that I saw nearby outside in the dirt, and they did not look like any bears. The footprints were large. They were canine for sure, I could tell by the shape of it. But they were huge. I wear a size 10 shoe, and these paw prints were larger than that. I was only able to see a couple of the paw prints in the dirt because it was scattered around the grass area as well. I remember showing this to a neighbor of mine that was camping beside us, and he told me it was the dog man. I asked him, did you hear all the ruckus and the noises last night? And he shook his head yes, but he wouldn't dare go outside his RV to check it out. I told him neither did I, and when I looked out the window, I didn't even see anything. He told me the beast was probably long gone by the time I got to the window. It was just letting its presence be known. I've always been a skeptic about these kind of things. Our neighbor camper was definitely not a skeptic. He seemed to know quite a bit of information about this dogman beast. He told me about what it kind of looks like, its color and its height, and what it's doing out here. Boy, I tell you. If he would have told me this information before I saw these prints and the scratch marks in the bark of the tree, I would have called all this some phony baloney. But I don't know. After hearing that and seeing what I saw out there, something's definitely out in those woods. And it's not human. And it's no animal that I have ever heard of before. Ever since then, I've never brought my family back to that campground. It's just too risky. Zach, I'm hoping you're having a good day. I'm emailing this story to you as it's something that happened to me when I was a teenager back in 2016. I'm born and raised in a small mountain town in eastern Kentucky, Pineville to be precise. It's a small yet quiet town. I have a love and hate relationship with this place. I love it because I love the small town vibe. There's not a lot of traffic, if any. People are friendly. Gas is cheap, and we get all four seasons. The downside to all this is that you have to drive incredibly far to do anything good, like getting to a major city to watch a football game or a basketball game. We have restaurants here, and they're okay, but nothing quite special. I'm a single child to a single mother. My dad has never been in the picture. I've only met him a couple of times in my youth. My mother works two jobs, and I work at the local grocery store. This is just a little background upon myself. It doesn't really pertain to the story per se. Outside of work and watching movies, the only thing I truly love to do is to go hiking and the occasional camping trips with my friends. Throughout my time out here, I've hiked on pretty much every trail that there is. But you just never know, really, when you're out there. Some of these trails are for the parks itself, and some of them might be even man-made that you're not really supposed to be on. Some of them look like something else may have made it. They're just really narrow and dense, and you just never know. I've never really been the adventurous type to actually go down those directions. This particular story happened when I was solo, hiking on this really cool trail. It's only about a mile long, if that. It was called the Rock Hotel Trail. It's a pretty popular trail. Outside of tourists, there's really nobody else there during the week for the most part. Parking can be a pain in the butt too. I usually just park my car on the side of the dirt road as there's no assigned parking spots nearby. What's really fantastic about this short little easy trail compared to other trails in the near vicinity is that it has a cave. A real cave. I've never personally went inside the cave. To be honest with you, caves kind of creep me out. They always have, ever since I watched that movie called The Descent. I just always stayed clear of it. I've seen it from the distance for the trail, but that was good enough for me. I have no idea if it's a shallow cave or if it's a very deep one. I have no clue to be honest with you. So, I was on my hike. I had my backpack on with my water hooked up to the side of it. I had some Nature's Valley bars and some snacks and of course a couple of Slim Jims. The bare necessities of course for a short hike. Like I mentioned before, it's not that long of a trail. I kind of go overboard with each of my hiking trips because you just never know what could really happen out there, especially if you're hiking by yourself. Better to be safe than sorry, I would always quote. So as I'm trekking along, 
The day is nice. The sun is starting to set. I could see all the beautiful colors mixed in with the clouds above in the sky as I walked. It was in the month of October, so it was already starting to get a bit chilly outside. The beautiful trees and everything were turning colors from the browns to the yellows to the reds all around me on the trail. I knew I had probably a good 20 minutes left of daylight before it was going to get dark. I don't know why I chose to start this hike this late in the evening, but I'm pretty sure it probably had something to do with my work schedule back then. I could see the cave in front of me, about 40 yards up in the distance upon the dirt trail. You could see it clear as day, the darkness sunk in around the stone wall. Even thinking about it now, typing this up gives me shivers. As I was continuing my casual walk, I happened to glance down with my walking stick just shooting the shit as I was walking towards the direction of that cave, when I saw a couple weird prints that were embanked in the dirt. At first, I thought they were just some dog prints, but when I noticed the size and look and appearance of these paw prints, I had to stop in my tracks and kneel down on my knees to take a better look. I found a few of these prints, all heading in the direction of that cave that's up ahead. What really threw me off about these prints wasn't that it was canine, as yeah, people have dogs and they walk their dogs on this trail, as that these prints more significantly looked more like a wolf-like print. But the strangest part about it was the size of these prints. Nothing I had ever seen before. These prints were incredibly large. I didn't have a tape roller with me, but putting my boot up against the side of it to judge its length, the print was almost the size of my shoe, and I wear a size 12. I took a picture with my cell phone, and I'll attach it to this email, so if you'd like to post it on your video, you can. They were some big-ass footprints. Bigger than anything I've ever seen in person before, at least. After taking a couple of pictures, I just stood up and kind of brushed it off. I didn't really question it. I knew it was some kind of wolf. I didn't know what kind of wolf or how close it was or even how fresh the tracks were. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just enjoying my day on the hiking trail. As I got closer to that cave though, oh gosh, I don't know, something got over me. I felt like something was off, something was different compared to the other times that I've been here. I don't know what it was. I just felt it deep inside my gut. As I approached that cave, I felt a shiver down my spine when I saw something inside the darkness of that cave entrance, staring back at me. Now, it's pretty much common sense that critters and forest dwellers like to find shelter in caves due to weather elements and other things of that nature, just survival instincts of every creature on Earth. But these were different. These eyes were red, and they were glowing in the dark. At this point... The sun was almost non-existent, and the sky was darkening above. As I was continuing my walk forward, that's when I heard whatever was inside that cave let out a loud guttural growl that sounded very canine-like. It wasn't a bear. It wasn't some kind of cat. It was something else. It sounded like... Whatever it was inside that cave was telling me to back the hell up. I didn't hesitate. I stopped in my tracks when I heard it. Then I started walking backwards out of fright. The eyes never took its eyes off of me in the dark. Hell, I didn't even see it blink. You don't need to be the smartest chip out there to know that common sense is telling you to get the hell out of that situation where you are obviously not wanted somewhere. That thing in that cave didn't have to tell me twice. It never even showed its true form now that I'm looking back upon this story. All I heard was the growl of some canine beast, and seeing its red visible glowing eyes in the darkness of the cave looking upon me on the trail. I backtracked on that trail for quite a while. Luckily I never fell and hurt myself. I just couldn't take my eyes off the cave entrance. I feared that if I ever turned around or something, that thing would come out and attack me, whatever it was. Luckily for my sake, it never did. I never did see whatever that was exit the cave, nor attack me or anybody else for that matter. 
There wasn't that many people on the trail to begin with, and when I was approaching the cave, there was nobody inside at the time. I'm wondering, if any of your other fans have been on this Rock Hotel trail before, if they've ever had any experience like this on that trail, or any trail for that matter, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And thank you for reading my story. This story happens on Labor Day weekend of 2021. I reside in Newport, Tennessee, which is a small town in the eastern part of Tennessee on the border of North Carolina. Not really on the border, but on the way there. I just tell people that because it's easier for them to find it on the map that way. My family and I were staying the Labor Day weekend over at the Pigeon River campground, right on the Pigeon River. It's a fantastic place to camp. Most people rent the cabins, some have some tents and whatnot. When we went out there for this trip, we too rented one of the cabins, and they're fairly good prices as well. We weren't really the RV type, nor could I even afford an RV even if I could. So that wasn't even one of the options for my family. Now this isn't really a fancy campground. The cabin is pretty much not fully furnished. There isn't even a bathroom inside. Just a couple of bunk beds and a table, that's just about it. But it was very clean, with a ceiling lamp and light and an AC unit on the wall and hardwood floors. We arrived there on a Friday afternoon. We set everything up inside the cabin, made our beds as we had to bring our own sheets and pillowcases as they aren't provided for the cabins. But in all honesty, I'm glad it's that way. You don't know when the last time something's been washed at a public place. I'd rather just bring my own stuff, you know what I mean? We had a quick late lunch on the wooden picnic tables that faced the river. It was beautiful. The weather was absolutely perfect. It wasn't even humid outside. Being that it is in the month of September, it's starting to get a little bit cooler. Thank God. I won't bore you on every single activity that we did on the first couple of nights, because it was the last night that we were there on that Sunday night, when things started to go a little weird. We spent a few hours in the early a.m. in the pool. Yes, this campground has a pool, and it's quite nice too. And then after we finished our pool activities, we relaxed and did a little bit of fishing. Later that evening, I was cooking up some burgers and hot dogs for my family on the grill that was right next to the steps to our cabin, while my son and my wife were putting the fire pit together to pre-stage for that evening. Once we wrapped up our food, the sun was starting to set, and it was time to get the fire blazing. Once we were all around the fire, and it was dark outside, we started telling ghost stories and eating s'mores while my wife and I had some shots of whiskey, just to ease things down a little bit and warm up our bodies. I don't recall what time it was when we put our kids to bed. I'm guessing it was sometime after 11pm, just given a rough estimate here. At this point, our kids were inside the cabin, hopefully sleeping, but more than likely they were goofing off. But that's alright. My wife and I just sat next to each other in our lawn chair sipping on some whiskey and just enjoying the night. I was smoking my cigarette as I was drinking my whiskey, cause to me they go hand in hand. My wife hates it, she hates the smell. At one point, I remember she was waving her hands in her face and going, Pugh! while she moved her lawn chair a few feet away from me because she hates cigarette smoke. And I know it smells, but I've smoked ever since the military. I have quit a few times, but I always seem to come back. That's why the phrase goes, once a smoker, always a smoker. When we were just sitting in our lawn chairs, just admiring the night, that's when something caught my eye that I didn't catch at first, but it was there all along at the beginning. On the other side of the river to our left, I couldn't tell you how far it was. It wasn't directly across from us. It was a little ways down on the water. It was a large black mass at the edge of the water line. At first, I didn't even notice it. By this time, it was pitch black out, and every little shadow was just irrelevant. But I caught movement for a split second in my peripheral view, and that's what got me to look in that direction. I nudged at my wife, leaning over on my right, to get her to look at the direction that I was looking at. I couldn't figure out what it was. She scooted her lawn chair just a little closer over to me and looked as well. 
we were both as silent as kids in a library. We just leaned forward in our lawn chairs, now adjusted to the nighttime, squinting our eyes trying to see what the hell it was. It barely moved at first. At first I thought maybe I was seeing things, but no. The longer that I looked at it, the more I noticed that whatever that thing was seemed to be drinking out of the river. It was a pretty large mass to be any kind of dog that I could think of. It wasn't a Great Dane or nothing like that, and it was much too big to be a coyote. It looked more like a wolf, judging by the pointy ears and the stature of this creature I was looking at across the river. But it was really big, like bigger than you would ever think. It was stretched downwards at el it was stretched downwards aiming at the water on all fours so I couldn't really tell its true size at first. Then my wife made a gasping noise. She barely even made any noise at all, but that was enough to rattle the thing to look in our direction. And when it did, I was baffled. The creature had red glowing eyes that gleamed in the darkness, crimson red, dark red yet still visible in the pitch black of night. At that moment, it stopped drinking and it stared directly at us for several seconds. I dared not to break eye contact with it because I had no clue if it was going to try to get over and attack us, or if it was just going to disappear and run off, or maybe continue drinking, hell if I know. There was definitely a good 10-15 second stare down that sent shivers down my spine. My wife took a picture with her cell phone that had a flash blast off in the distance that spooked whatever the hell it was across the water. And it scared the crap out of me too because I had no clue she had the flash on and was taking a picture. It startled the beast nonetheless. And when that flash happened, the thing hopped up on its back hind legs like a human being and darted off into the woods behind it, disappearing within seconds. The picture she took was crap. You couldn't even truly see the thing. What a waste. After that night, it seemed like nobody else had seen what we had seen. Even though we weren't the only ones that were outside. But oddly enough, we were the only ones that were actually looking across the water and saw that thing. We truly didn't know what that thing was when it was drinking the water at the river. But when that thing hopped up on its back two legs... I have a feeling we actually had a true encounter with the Dogman. Three weeks ago, my family and I were camping over at the Atlantic Shore Pines Campground in Tuckerton, New Jersey. It's a great little family getaway. There's a store, people are barbecuing, they got a pool. It really is a family adventure. My family has been going here for the past few years outside of 2020 due to the Rona. There's a couple of other camping locations out here in Jersey, but this one was always our favorite. My parents own a 24-foot RV that we usually take everywhere we go when it comes to camping. They rarely do the whole tent camping thing. Even though it's considered more legit, it's still just more comfortable to take the RV. And I was not going to complain about that. I'm just your typical 16-year-old teenager that complains when it's too cold and complains when it's too hot. I don't like mosquitoes and I don't like any type of insects whatsoever anyways. I always tried to be respectful to my parents. I never tried to complain too much when it came to camping and hiking activities. Both my parents are not originally from New Jersey. Even though they grew up in a city, they've always wanted to be more of the outdoorsy type, or at least try to be. Or in other words, in my mind, pretend to be. My dad is actually really cool. I remember when I was younger in our backyard, he would watch all these little YouTube videos of people building cabins out in the wilderness. And he actually tried to build this little hobbit thing for me in the backyard. Made out of rocks and wood and watered down mud. He even made a little fire pit that we all could use in the backyard that was right in front of the circular entrance doorway. It was quite cute. It's still there to this day. I haven't used it in years, but still, six months worth of work for him trying to figure it out, it was... It was adorable. It was only a one-night stay. Typically, my family would do the whole weekend, 
but due to my parents' work schedule, we had to make a quick trip and just booked one night in advance. We arrived there Saturday morning and set everything up. My duty was to make sure that all the firewood was gathered up by the fire pit ready for that evening. My mother helped my father with whatever they had to do. I didn't really pay too much attention. I'm just happy that I had cell phone reception. That actually saved my life. And I'll tell you how. Fast forward after lunchtime. My parents were just in the lawn chairs telling some jokes or talking about whatever grown-ups talk about. I was bored out of my mind. I was constantly on Facebook looking at notifications and Instagram and things like that, but even that eventually got boring. I told my parents that I was going to go walk around because I'm bored out of my mind on a trip that I didn't want to go to. I was a little snobby and I regret it looking back now. All I did was wander around the campsite, waving and saying hello to the friendly people that also occupied the vicinity. There wasn't too many kids my own age, not that I saw at least. It was in the evening hours and the sun was going to be setting pretty soon. Which didn't bother me because I had my phone with me, which also had a flashlight on it so I didn't really care. I wandered around countlessly, bored out of my mind, until eventually where I reached a wooded area where there was no trail. At least, not one that was meant for anyone to cross. What made me become adventurous that moment? I can't really say. I didn't really have a reason why I was so curious, but I was. There was a narrow little path that looked like somebody had made at one time. I was literally just a few minutes away from where my parents were, and I figured, why not? Maybe I'll find something cool, hell, anything to make the time pass as I was completely bored. I turned on my flashlight on my phone because, like I mentioned earlier, it was starting to get a little dark. But it wasn't there yet, I just had it on, just for comfort. I tracked on for a few minutes at a very slow pace. I wasn't in any rush to go anywhere. Eventually I made it to an open clearing a couple of minutes later. I wasn't on the trail for too long before I came across this open area that looked like, maybe, in the past, this was actually part of the camping location. It definitely looked like it was, from what I saw. There was a couple old rusted fire pit things sticking out of the overgrown grass. They were at least 15 feet apart from each other, so maybe it was a couple of tent camping locations from back in the day. There was this wooden shack that was off in the distance on the right hand side behind those areas. It was small, probably about 5 feet wide and I had no clue how deep it went. It was closed but partially open as the door was cracked open maybe a few inches or so. There was no windows, and the wood was rotting. It looked like it could barely hold up. I kind of walked around a little bit. I didn't venture too far into the area because I'm a chicken for bugs and stuff like that, and that includes snakes and anything else for that matter. I started to walk back towards that thin trail to get back to the campsite to go back to my parents, when I heard some ruffling noises behind me, followed by some creaking noise. I remember the hair on the back of my neck standing up. I had goosebumps all over both of my arms and I just stood there. Do I dare turn around? I remember thinking to myself. And of course, I turned around. In the distance, inside that shed, is when I saw this black claw-like thing gripping the outside edge of that door. The fingers were human-like, but long, with razor-sharp-looking nails on the ends. The hand was covered in fur like some kind of werewolf. I remember putting my hand over my mouth, about ready to scream. I dialed my dad on my cell phone as soon as that happened. The door slowly crept more open, inch by inch. I was on the verge of crying when my dad asked me where I was that he was out looking for me as I hadn't checked in for quite a bit. I told him what direction I headed from their site, and where that trail entrance was located at. I told him that I ventured off into the woods, and I shouldn't have, that I found this open clearing, and I found some abandoned-looking camping spots, and a shed, but I wasn't alone. At this point, I was already walking backwards on the trail, making sure that thing didn't fully come out of that shed. 
I turned around to see if I could see my dad in the distance in the clearing, but I couldn't see him just yet. But he said he had just entered the trail. I turned around and started walking at a faster pace in my dad's direction as I could hear him talking to me in the distance and over my phone. I turned a quick glance behind me in the direction of that old shed to see that the door was completely open and the shed was now empty. That started to freak me out. I think I see you up ahead! And he started raising his voice as he was talking to me on the phone. Maybe he was trying to spook whoever the hell was out here with me. Or whatever it was. I saw my dad in the distance, and as I was freaking out and running in his direction, I couldn't help but hear the howl in the background. A howl that I've never heard before. It was no coyote. That I am 100% sure of. It sounded like it was pretty far off, probably even farther than the shed itself. Yet, I can't help but think that that same thing that was inside that shed was the same thing that made that howl. Dear Zack, I hope you enjoy my story and you will narrate it on your channel. It's not a very long story, but maybe you could mix it in with some other stuff. I live in a small town about two hours south of Toronto, Canada, near the U.S. border. And when I mean small, I mean less than 10,000 people. There terribly isn't too much going on out here other than factory work and restaurants. I won't give you complete details or a background check of myself because it really means nothing to the story. In 2015, I work a swing shift at work by the way. It was just past 11 p.m. and I had gotten on the city bus heading back home. I do not drive. I've never learned and I've never wanted to learn. Even the mention of me getting behind the wheel just freaks me out. Even to this day, I refuse to drive. Once I exited the bus, my house was only a couple of blocks away from the bus stop. There was only a few houses in our part of town. Main Street was where the bus station was located at, so I do have to walk kind of through a rural area to get towards my house. It's really not that big of a deal. But in the winter time, it really sucks. As I was walking home, I'm the only person out at this hour. Most people's house lights were already turned off with the occasional people that forgot that their porch light was on. And that's when I saw something. Out in the field to my left is when I saw it. I saw this large black creature running on its back legs like a man through the fields and disappearing behind some trees. It all happened so fast, but I saw it clear as day in the darkness. The nearby streetlight kind of helped with that. This creature resembled a dog, but it was completely dark like it was black and fur. It was kind of far off, so it's really hard to tell, but it definitely had a canine head and ears. I stopped walking when I saw this thing running across the field and disappearing behind the trees. I was in total shock and I didn't know what exactly I was looking at. I was very cautious the rest of the way home, still shocked, trying to figure out what the hell I had just seen. I've done some research and listened and watched to a lot of YouTube videos to figure this out, but it was a real life dogman. I was canoeing with my best friend back in the day in North Carolina. I won't give any specific details because I don't really want people to know who I am. I just want to share my experience for those that will listen. If you live in the south, then you know there's lots of lakes and rivers and plenty of things to do out here in the outdoors. I was out with my best friend Trisha. That I will say. There's a million Trishas out there, good luck figuring us out. We had been canoeing for about two hours. It was a perfect day outside and the humidity wasn't all that bad that day. Surrounded by trees and beautiful landscape, you couldn't really ask for anything more. While I was out there with my friend, I saw something. My friend did not. She was paddling just a little bit better than myself and I was probably recording this live on Instagram or something of the nature. I saw a dogman up a hill just on the side of the water bank. I know the difference between a wolf and a coyote and any other kind of forest animal. 
This was none of those. It was a real dog man. It was running on all fours, but it was at least four times the size of a coyote. It was completely jet black, full of fur, and its eyes, I swear to you, they were glowing, even in the daytime. It never seemed to notice me or my friend out on the water as it was casually running around. One minute you saw it and the next you didn't. I really only saw it for a split second, but it was definitely a dogman. Everything that I've seen online and heard about on YouTube describes this thing perfectly. I never really believed in any of this until I saw it myself. Hello, Zach. If you're reading this email, I hope that you enjoy this true story that I'm sending you. And if you choose to narrate it, it would be greatly appreciated. This encounter happened two years ago over at the Scissor Tail Campground in Edmond, Oklahoma, right off of Lake Arcadia. It was springtime in the month of March. It was myself, my then girlfriend, and her little sister. This was our first time going to this location. My girlfriend and I at the time were big campers. We always liked to explore the woods. We always liked to be outdoorsy and explore any time that we could. Her little sister had never been camping before this prior trip. And I hate to say it, after this trip, I think she's been scarred for life. But I wouldn't know that for sure, as a few months after this encounter, my girlfriend and I actually split up. After we paid our fee to get onto the campground, we found our particular spot, set everything up, and prepared for an early lunch. Her sister was seven years old at the time, if I'm not mistaken, so I had a big 10x10 10 10 big blue son of a gun to set up and all three of us were going to camp together. Of course, that kind of spoiled things. I originally wanted her little sister to get a kid-sized tent and just have it set up next to ours, you know, for privacy reasons at night. But her sister was not having that. She just says, you'll just have to manage without it for one night. She was a good older sister. She included her in a lot of activities that we did. Almost too many. The afternoon was uneventful. They even have a playground area for her little sister to play on. Water fountains. And they even have real restrooms, which was pretty impressive. To me, it was a nice medium-sized campground. It wasn't the smallest that I've been to, but it wasn't the largest neither. But being by Lake Arcadia was pretty neat. I didn't bring any fishing poles, as I'm not really one for fishing, but it was still nice to see the water out in the distance. Once we hung out around the campsite for a couple of hours, we figured it was time to maybe go explore a little more. And what I mean by exploring is there's some hiking trails in this area that venture off from the campsite. The weather was perfect, I do remember that, as the humidity wasn't really kicking in so much. It was still spring, and we were dreading the humidity that was going to soon come to us. That is why I usually plan my camping trips in spring and fall. Winter, it's a little too chilly, and summer, it's dreadfully hot. We found a hiking trail that wasn't far off from our assigned spot. We had our water bottles with us and flashlights just in case if it got dark early. By this time, it was nearing dinner time, but we wanted to go on a little hike first. That way, I thought we would burn off any calories before we even ate them. While we were hiking, we then realized how big this place actually was. The campsite individually didn't seem like it was that big with that terribly many spots, but the property itself that belonged to the campground was humongous. At least a hundred acres, if not more. I think we were out there on the trails for at least two hours. At that point, her sister was complaining, and I'll be honest, I was kind of silently complaining too. I was getting really hungry, but my girlfriend was more the athletic one compared to me. While we were trekking back to the campgrounds, we started hearing these weird, odd snapping sounds. And I know what you might think, watch out, it's a bear. Watch out, it's some coyote. We didn't see anything. Every time we would hear a snapping sound, or sounds that something was thrown around, we would turn around to see absolutely nothing. It was quite windy that day, so a lot of the bushes and stuff were swaying regardless. There was no way to pinpoint what direction those sounds were actually coming from. All I could tell you was it was somewhere off on the trail behind us. 
We brushed it off, and we shouldn't have, because those sounds happened more than once. In fact, the closer we seemed to have gotten back to the campgrounds, the more frequent and loud that they became. But every time that we would turn around getting spooked, we would see nothing at all. Later that night, I cooked up food that we had brought from our cooler. We sat around the fire, joking around and having s'mores and telling ghost stories. We stayed up pretty late. I don't remember how late we did, but I know it was well past our little sister's bedtime. But it was the weekend after all, and her parents were not along on this trip, so it really didn't matter. Eventually the night had the end, and we all packed it in and got inside the tent. Now the tent model that I have has two front doors. One of them is just a screen to keep out the mosquitoes, and the main door that completely shields everything off and is closed completely. The weather was nice that night, and I figured having some fresh air during the night wouldn't be such a bad thing. So I left the main door unzipped, and I kept the screen door closed tight to keep out those pesky little mosquitoes and critters. Sometime in the middle of that night, I had to use the restroom. I was half asleep and dreading every moment. I wanted to wait until morning, but there was no holding that back. I remember putting on my coat, grabbing my flashlight, and silently opening the zipper and going out to the restroom. The restroom was only a little ways down the dirt trail, not terribly far off, but when you are half asleep and it's in the middle of the night, it seems longer than it really is. I handled my business and I started walking back towards my tent. When about halfway there, I start hearing those same snapping sounds that I heard earlier on that trail, but this time, it was on the campgrounds. The first time that I heard it, I nearly jumped off the ground. I spun around with my flashlight to see nothing but shadows. I was the only person outside. It must have been terribly late. I didn't bring my cell phone with me. Then I was freaked out and completely paranoid. I power walked all the way to my tent and got inside as quickly as I could, zipping up the screen door behind me. I didn't zip up the main door, I wanted to see if I could see something outside. I wanted to see if I was being followed. My entry back into the tent was not stealthful at all. I woke up my girlfriend and her little sister when I got inside. They must have saw that I was freaked out. My girlfriend asked me what was going on and her little sister was silent just staring at me, still half asleep. I explained everything to them, the sounds that I heard, and I think maybe there was something out there on the trail and maybe it followed us back to camp. But then again, maybe I'm just being paranoid. We are out in the woods after all. There's wildlife out here. As I was trying to justify my actions to my girlfriend, I noticed that her vision was no longer on me, but past me, behind me through the netting door. That's when I got a shiver down my spine. I turned my head around to see what she was looking at. At first, it was just a shadowy movement in the distance, but as we continued to watch, that shadowy figure emerged, the silhouette of this giant dog-like creature that stood like a man. Its eyes were glowing a crimson red, and it was hunched over at least six, six and a half feet tall. It was sniffing around like it was scavenging for food, or just curious about the surroundings in general. Not a moment later, after its full visibility from the moonlight above, my girlfriend's little sister screamed at the top of her lungs, startling the creature. The creature looked in our direction for a split second before darting off into the woods, disappearing. I don't even remember if it was just her that was screaming or the both of them together, but their screaming scared me half to death because we were all inside that tent together. But I do know that all three of us were completely freaked out. They were mumbling and screaming and crying. I was freaked out, but I was more concerned about trying to calm down her little sister. She was having a panic attack. I don't think we got much sleep that night. I know for a fact I did not. I was too paranoid to even close my eyes. Eventually the sun came up. It must have happened pretty late in the night because the sun came up shortly after that. We packed up our things as quickly as we could and we got the hell off that campsite. I've never seen a dog-like creature like that before. We've all heard the rumors about the dogman creature in Oklahoma, 
and after doing some research and checking out some forms online, it's not just here. It seems like this creature is everywhere, but I know one thing for certain. It's real. Dear Zack Baby TV, I hope that this email finds your interest. This story involves myself and my family on a weekend camping trip over at the Cove Lake Campground in Arkansas. Cove Lake is a wonderful place to camp. We've been here about three different times in the past. There's a lot of beautiful lake views that are available. A lot of the spots you have to reserve in advance, but there is a section of first come first serve, which is usually what we end up doing anyways. This place is pet friendly. They offer cabins to camping to RV hookups. People bring their kayaks and their canoes and their boats out here. People fish. There's picnic areas. There's just a little something for everybody. As we have been here three different times before, this is our favorite place to go. There's not a lot of people having parties being loud. No heavy drinking. No fighting. No vandalism. This is a peaceful, family-friendly environment. And that's exactly why we kept coming here. But what we soon found out was that families weren't the only ones who were stalking around. We paid for two nights to stay here to leave on a Sunday afternoon and head back home. I won't tell you exactly what spot that I picked for the simple fact that I'm actually telling you the real name of the park in itself is probably bad. But also, it may bring in some more business so it's kind of a double-edged sword in my opinion. We arrived on a Friday afternoon. Both my wife and I took the day off so we could have a two-day adventure with our daughter. When we arrived, we got to the first come first serve section, found a nice little spot that was really near the water. I backed up the truck and we started to unload. I'm trying to go off of memory as best as possible, so bear with me if some of the details are left out or don't make any sense. But I assure you, this is absolutely true. Once everything was unloaded, I had to go purchase some of the firewood, as they won't let you bring your own. I purchased quite a bit of firewood, as I knew we were going to be staying here Friday night and also Saturday night, and I figured we would be around the campfire for most of the evening before going to bed anyways, so I went ahead and bought three different packs of wood. Each bundle pack came with about five or six pieces of wood that was wrapped in plastic. Dropping off the firewood next to the steel-rimmed fire pit, I sat down at the picnic bench and just relaxed for a bit. It's pretty much peaceful out there, and the view is gorgeous, especially in the fall, when all the colors start to change on the surrounding trees. I remember the first day that we were there, we made a quick lunch, throwing some hot dogs on the grill. I had brought my portable Weber grill with us in the back of my truck, there's just something about using the public ones that kind of creeps me out. You don't know how clean people are, and you don't know what kind of bugs have been around it. Afterwards, all three of us went down by the lake and did a little bit of fishing. We didn't expect to catch anything, nor would we eat anything that we would catch anyways. We would just unhook it and throw it back in the water. We all eat fish, just not on a camping trip. We're pretty traditional with hot dogs and hamburgers for the most part. The first night was uneventful, perfect in every way, and exactly why we come to that location. For the peace and quiet, to not have to worry about incoming phone calls, checking emails, or even thinking about work whatsoever. Just total peace of mind with nature and relaxation. The following morning, I cooked some eggs and bacon in a frying pan on my Weber grill. We watched some of the neighboring campers on their canoes out on the water and debated on if we should rent some, but we decided not to as our daughter had yet learned to swim. After lounging around for a couple of hours, the weather was perfect, so we decided on going on a little hike instead. There's quite a few of little trails that surround the campsite. We didn't know their exact locations as we usually don't go hiking when we come out here, but on this particular trip we decided to. We hiked around for a couple of hours before returning back to our campsite. At this point, it was time for lunch and I cooked something up on the grill once again. I don't recall what we did afterwards, but once night fell, it was time to cook up dinner. 
I had prepared a couple of steaks and some chopped up potatoes for my wife and I, and again, more hot dogs for my daughter. Our daughter was six years old and a very picky eater. She loved hamburgers and hot dogs and macaroni and french fries whenever we would go out camping. We always planned our camping trips at least three to four times a year, usually in the springtime and sometimes in the fall, never during summer as it's just too hot. After I had wrapped up cooking dinner, we ate our feast, we drank a couple of beers, and just sat in our lawn chairs around the fire pit, admiring the beauty and the stars up above. It was a clear night, and the stars were so bright up in the sky. I don't recall what time we went to bed, but as soon as our daughter started to get cranky, I knew it was time for some shut-eye. Some hours passed, and something awoke us in the middle of the night outside of our tent. The sounds of movement. Usually, we would pay this no mind as we're out in the woods, and there's all sorts of different animals that call that place home. But these were no ordinary movement noises. These sounded like someone was walking around, dishing around our stuff. I had two thoughts in my brain. One, there were some people walking around our site going through our stuff. Two, maybe it was a raccoon or maybe even a coyote looking for scraps. If it was option two, I wouldn't really mind too much. We didn't have much food left as we ate pretty much all of it. But if it was option one, I knew we were going to be in some trouble. Luckily at this point, our daughter was still asleep, but my wife and I were awake and contemplating what to do next. I only had a hatchet with me that I only use for chopping down wood into smaller pieces for the fire pit. Ever since I started watching those videos on YouTube, you know the ones, the guys that survive out in the woods, they build shelters and log cabins and short-term shelters out in the woods. Bushcraft, I believe is what it's called. I've never actually done any of that myself, but I've always been kind of intrigued to try it. My wife was really freaked out, but she kept her volume to a very minimum not to wake up our daughter. She kept telling me not to go outside, but I had to know who the hell was out there. That's our stuff after all, and what if they vandalize my truck? This is the first time this has ever happened to us. We've never heard any stories about this camping site ever having any issues like this before in the past. We've camped at many sites, and nothing like this had ever occurred before. Hatchet in hand, I slowly unzipped the tent about halfway and started to peek outside. Peeking my head outside the tent, I saw nothing at all. I slipped on my shoes and stepped outside. My wife didn't go outside, but she poked her head out to watch from behind me. Flashlight in hand and hatchet in the other. I was scared and curious all mixed into one emotion at that point. I tiptoed around the campsite around the corner to the right. And that's when I saw something that I've never seen before. It was this giant black wolf sniffing around our stuff. It was facing away from me so it didn't notice that I was behind it. If I had the guess, it was about 25 feet in front of me. I followed through with my first instinct, was to shine the flashlight at it and scream for it to get out of there. So I did. What turned around to face me was no wolf. As this wolf turned around slightly, I saw that its ears were pointed, but the ears were smaller on its head than it should have been on a wolf. Its body, its position, even being on all fours seemed distorted. Something was off with its posture. Outside of that, the only thing that I could remember seeing from this thing was its eyes. The eyes were like an amber color. They were glowing in the dark. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. It turned startled, looked at me then turned away from me, jumping on its back hind legs and darting off into the woods, disappearing into the darkness. This all happened within a matter of like three seconds. I was dumbfounded, frozen, completely in shock. Sure, I was scared, but I think I was more shocked and confused more than anything else. What I had originally thought was a wolf or some sort of large coyote was in fact something else. Something that I've only heard rumors about growing up out here in Arkansas. Something about a dogman. My wife didn't see it as it was around the corner, 
but after my shock started the phase out, I got back to her inside the tent, explained everything we could, and we stayed in the tent until sunrise. We tried to pretend like everything was kosher for our daughter's sake in the morning. I cooked up some food, now on full alert, but then thinking maybe this thing only comes out at night. We left the next day, and we didn't go camping for quite some time. We still go back to that campsite, though. I know, sounds crazy, right? But the thing actually never did attack anybody. Maybe it was just hungry. I'm not too sure. But like I said... We love that campground. Good afternoon, Zach. Like you, I'm also a YouTuber, but I don't tell scary stories. I run a bushcraft YouTube channel, which I build shelters and log cabins in the woods, and I record the whole process. I listen to your channel quite often, and that's why I'm submitting this to you now. I won't disclose the name of my channel because a lot of you probably might know who I am. I'm located in British Columbia, Canada, which is on the western portion of the country. I fancy that's enough information about me. Now, let me tell you what happened. I was planning on staying out in the woods in this open property where I had permission to build some things. I was going to stay out there for two nights and build this one-person-sized shelter made out of logs. The first day of building and recording went as normal as usual. I had the basic framing done around the shelter with a tarp over the roof. That would be suffice for the first night, as long as a good fire was roaring, as this happened in the month of November and it was already quite cold. On the second day, I remember I set up my tripod and I was recording myself cutting some things for the roof. This happened in the late afternoon. The sun was still out. It wasn't dark. I heard the howling in the distance, which is not uncommon out here. But the howling continued, and as it did, the howling got louder. They were not the sounds of coyotes. They were definitely more wolf-like. And the louder that they became indicated that they were getting closer towards my bushcraft camp. Now when I say they, I'm assuming there may have been more than one because of how many howls I was hearing, but I was not quite sure. This all happened while I was recording my video. If you by chance figure out who I am, and you watch the correct video at the correct time, you'll know what I'm talking about. So fast forward to that evening, I finished the roof up with this shelter. I'm plastering everything down on the side walls with wet mud for better insulation. Later on in that day, I finish everything up and I'm a mess. There's a nearby stream, probably a good five minute walk from the location that I was building at. I wanted to go down there and clean myself up as my arms and hands were just pure mud and there was no way that I was going to cook that night and even try to work with the camera being as dirty as I was. So I leave my camera over at the shelter that I was working on. I walk over towards the creek, about five minutes later like I mentioned. I kneel down and I start washing my hands and arms off in the creek, not trying to get too much more dirty than I already was. Once I was finished, I stepped away from the creek, and was just about to start walking back in the direction of the shelter, is when I casually looked down and saw some prints in the mud near the creek line. Right off the bat, I knew that they were wolf prints, just judging by the shape of everything on it. I've been doing this for a long time, so I know a wolf's print when I see it, but these couple of prints that I found were still way off. What was off about these prints were the sizes. They were big bigger than any wolf's prints I have ever seen in person. At first, I only found a couple of these tracks, but as I continued down the waterway, I picked up some more. They were the same size, the same shape. It was the same creature. I narrowed it down to just one. Following it, it led northeast away from the water, heading in the direction towards my camp. As it did, though, the paw prints changed. The first red flag is the size of these prints. 
They were huge. They were larger than my hand with my fingers spread out. This thing was large. It was no ordinary wolf either. Second red flag. The prince changed. They went from walking on fours to walking on twos, which I had to go back and double check, but it was correct. Whatever this wolf was, it was walking on all fours for a bit, but then it started walking on two legs, which no canine can do. Totally gave me the spooks. I eventually lost the tracks, but no matter, I went back to my shelter and I got prepared for that evening's dinner. Definitely more paranoid, I'll say that for sure. Definitely had my guard up for the remainder of that night. I wasn't alone in the woods. I never was. I never have been. But I've never been alone in the woods with something like this. Things like this are only myths and legends. Stuff that people talk about and listen to on YouTube. I never thought in a million years I would ever see tracks like this. But I did. I wrapped up dinner that night, got everything set up inside the shack. I chopped up a ton of firewood. I wanted to keep that fire blazing throughout the whole night, not just because it was November and it's cold at night, but because maybe it'll spook off whatever the hell was out there. Even though deep down inside, I surely doubted it. Judging by the size of the paw prints, this thing was huge. Those prints were way too close to the shelter I had made too close for comfort. I didn't sleep much that night, but eventually I did doze off. When I awoke in the morning, I was freaked out. How did I let myself go to sleep like that? But nonetheless, everything was in its perfect order when I exited the shelter. I took a quick glance around on the ground. That's when the hair stood up on end on my body. And I mean, all over my body. There were tons of those paw prints all over the place. Some of the prints were hard to make out due to the hardness of the dirt, but there were still areas around there that were partially wet and you could see those as clear as day. But I think the most frightening thing that I saw outside those prints was the slashing marks on the nearby tree, and they didn't come from any bear. If you read this story, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that maybe I'll hear it on your YouTube channel one day. That way people can understand nature better and respect it. And always keep your guard up when you're out there alone. And even if you're not alone, still, make sure you bring a weapon. Three years ago, my father and I were late night fishing at Lake Martin, Louisiana. We fished there numerous times throughout the years together. My dad owns a small little boat that fits about four to six people, but it's usually just the two of us whenever he goes out. And we always went during the night. I remember asking him once why, and he said they just bite better at night. I never questioned it. I just enjoyed going fishing with my pop. It's relaxing. Aside from the mosquitoes, it's actually pretty enjoyable. The only thing that always worried me growing up fishing with my dad was the gators. That's always been something that's always terrified me. And his boat is not that large. Hell, some of these gators are longer than his damn boat is. I've always wondered how he got the balls to buy something so small and not have a worry in the world. My dad always told me that the gators would never bother you if you don't mess with them. We're not primarily what it's after for food. But if you do piss one of them off, best be sure they will attack you. And it's not just the gators you gotta worry about out here. It's the snakes. The mosquitoes like I mentioned before. Some mosquitoes carry diseases. A part of me enjoys the fishing with my dad. But at what risk? Sometimes I wish that we would just leave this state and head somewhere up north that's a little more dry. But my family's been here forever. I don't see that ever happening. At least not them. I plan on leaving Louisiana as soon as I finish college. I have one more year left and I'm out of here. I still haven't decided quite yet what direction I want to go to, but I also have to consider employment. But I have been saving my money for about a year now, so maybe, before the year's end, I'll know exactly what direction I would like to head. It's a big risk. I don't have family anywhere else. 
but I'm just over this place. They could have the boot. It was some time after 10 p.m. It was completely pitch black outside. We had our lights on the boat, and we had some flashlights as some extras. We had our fishing lines out, and we were just cruising along. We were trying to catch as many largemouth bass as we could. Maybe some white bass, bluegill, whatever we could. But bass is primarily what we go after. Some time goes by. We catch quite a few fish. My dad is never satisfied. He's one of those old marine guys that's very stubborn, and he has a certain number in mind before he wants to put the boat back to shore. Somewhere off on the lake, I won't be able to properly explain it through email, but it was on the western end. That I do remember. We heard this shuffling in the water near the edge, which is nothing out of the ordinary. There's birds out here, fish, gators, you name it. It's complete wildlife out here. And during the night, it's even more frightening. I grabbed the spotlight that was on the boat and shined it in the direction where we heard the shuffling of the water. All we saw was ripples in the water at first, but as I shined it just a little bit more upwards, that's when I caught a glimpse of something I've never seen before. Right then and there, right in the light, I saw, no, let me rephrase this, we saw this large black furry wolf hunched over like it was trying to grab something out of the water. Something big. The sounds of the water splashing and the ripples it made was no regular fish. It may even been a gator. As soon as I shone the light on this furry beast, it looked straight up at us in surprise. The eyes reflected like someone taking a picture of a cat, but its eyes were a reddish color. I've never seen an animal outside of a rat or a bunny rabbit have red eyes, but these eyes were a dark reddish color. And just like that, this beast backed itself up on its four legs, away from the waterline where its attention once was. It bounced up on its back legs, turned around, and ran off into the brush. It freaking ran on its back legs. I'd never seen any type of wolf do that before. It's not even possible. I've seen videos of cute dogs hopping on their back legs trying to mimic their owners. But this is a wild beast. I'm not even sure if what we had seen was a wolf at all at this point. What I saw terrified me. My dad was totally freaked out too. Not as much as I was. My dad's a retired marine. It takes a lot to spook someone like that. We sat there in the water for countless minutes with the light shone in that direction. Wondering if that thing was going to come back around or not. It never did. We just sat there in that small boat on the water just floating about for about five, maybe ten minutes. Eventually, we set our way back towards his truck and got the boat loaded and got the hell out of there with our catches. My dad doesn't like to talk about it, and we've never fished there since. We still go out fishing from time to time together but we no longer go to that lake. Now I've heard lots of rumors about a dogman and a Rougarou. I don't know what the difference is between them, if there is any, but I know the Rougarou is a big myth out here in Louisiana. Maybe that's what it was, or maybe it was a dogman. I don't know, and I don't care to find out. I hope that you enjoyed this short tale of my encounter, Zach. If you plan on narrating it, just let everybody know. Stay out of the swamps. If it's not a dogman Rougarou, it's a gator. It's just not worth it. I hope you have a good night, and thank you for reading my story. In 2019, in the month of November, my wife and I were staying over at the Brendan T. Burns State Forest, it's a campground that's located in New Jersey. I had reserved one of the cabins that's on site for a weekend little getaway. We have camped many times, but this was actually our first time staying in an actual cabin. My wife and I both took off that Friday well in advance knowing that we wanted to spend the whole weekend out there. I reserved to stay Friday night through Saturday night and then pack up and leave on Sunday afternoon. It was a nice cabin with a furnished living room with a fireplace. They also had outdoor campfire rings, 
two double-deck bunks, a full kitchen with running water, electric stove, refrigerator, and everything else with electricity. These cabins hold up to six people, but it was just my wife and I, as she was expecting our first child a few months afterwards. The beautiful part about it was that the cabin faced the pond. The unfortunate part was that we had booked in November, and after the fact, when we had already arrived on our first day on Friday, we realized that the cabins do not have indoor plumbing or source of heat other than the fireplace. This is due to the cold weather between the months of November through January. We were a little disappointed, but I'd already paid, so we just made the best out of it. Nothing wrong with living a couple of days the old-fashioned way. Plus, I've always loved the smell of burning firewood. After our check-in, we brought everything from inside our SUV, put all of our food that we had brought, along with our drinks, inside the refrigerator, and we walked the park a little bit just to explore the area, as this was our first time at this campground. Later on in the evening, I cooked up some food out on the fire pit that was outside the cabin. We sat around in the lawn chairs that we had brought and just enjoyed the evening together. I wasn't used to sleeping in a bunk bed, neither was my wife, but it was a weekend getaway and I wanted that cabin feel. I would have definitely preferred a regular queen or king size bed, but beggars can't be choosers. Plus, it was just a one-time thing. The following day, we cooked up food we enjoyed each other's company. Nothing special or anything out of the ordinary whatsoever. Fast forward to Saturday night. That is when things took a turn for the worst. It was somewhere between the hours of 9 and 11 p.m. and my wife was already inside the cabin preparing to go to bed. I was still sipping on my beer enjoying the last remains of the fire pit. The embers were sparking and the fire was still roaring. I didn't want to let it go to waste. As I was enjoying the fire, I got bored. I started walking around a little bit. I didn't leave side to the cabin, but I was kind of just wandering around playing on my cell phone. I was walking along the shoreline of the pond that was near the cabins. It was mostly cloudy, but still, it was enjoyable. There was a slight breeze and it was pretty chilly outside. But out here in the northeast, we're used to the cold, so it really is no big deal. At first, when I thought that I saw something across the pond on the left near the tree line, I thought it was my eyes just playing tricks on me, because my eyes were not yet adjusted to the dark as I was looking at my cell phone screen for quite a bit. But I did see some darkness on the grass area near the water near the tree line. I didn't think anything of it at first, but as I continued the watch, I noticed that this blackness was not just a shadow. At first, being in the dark, I thought it was somebody that was fishing, but they were dressed in all black, and it was on the other side of the water, so it was pretty far away. It was really hard to tell. As I examined further, really paying attention to it now with my cell phone back in my pocket, as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I noticed that it was not a human being. This thing stood like a human being, but it was completely black and it looked like it was covered in fur. What I thought once was a shadow was now something that was animalistic. I was freaking out. I thought that I was encountering a real-life Bigfoot. Its posture was correct, but its body shape was completely different from that what I've seen online about Bigfoots. This thing had a hunched-over back. Its ears were short yet pointy and its snout was more like of a dog. If you could imagine a wolf that was all black, standing on its back legs like a human being. If I was to guess, probably about 5 foot 10, maybe 6 foot, but I could be mistaken. Its body frame was quite slim, aside from the upper torso that looked like it was quite muscular. I don't know what it was looking at or what it was doing, but as I was watching this thing, it galloped off still on its back legs, into the woods and just disappearing casually. I didn't spook it. I didn't scream at it. I didn't even take a picture. I was just standing there in total shock just looking at it in the dark. I thought it was a fisherman. Then I thought I saw a Bigfoot. But after my eyes adjusted, I realized I saw a real dogman. I hope you enjoyed my sighting. 
It's not a long story, but it is true. My wife cannot vouch for it because she was inside, but I know what I saw that night. I hope you have a good night and thank you for reading this story. Back when I was in 11th grade, I was upstairs doing my homework inside my bedroom late one night. If my memory serves me right, it was a Thursday night leading into Friday's assignment that is due. I was well behind in trying to catch up, as I've been a procrastinator for just about everything. It wasn't just a face. Still to this day, as I'm emailing you this story, I'm still a procrastinator. Look how long it took me just to send this to you. And how long have you been doing this? LOL. I have no memory, but it was some kind of school assignment, and it was well past midnight. I lived in a small populated area in a town called New Kingstown, Pennsylvania, but you could basically just consider it Harrisburg. Late at night, I was doing my homework assignments. My bedroom window was open as I'm on the second floor, and it's always been a lot hotter upstairs compared to being downstairs. But there was only the master bedroom which was downstairs, which were my parents. If I was to guess, it was between the hours of 12am and 2am. I was going to pull an all-nighter if necessary to finish that paper, whatever the hell it was at the time. Outside of my window being open, the lights on in my room, I was playing some light melody music in the background. I believe it was Elton John or something from the 70s. This story goes back some time. I kept the volume low because of how late it was in the night, and I didn't want to be rude and wake anybody up. While I was doing my homework, I started hearing these weird noises outside. Now I must mention that my bedroom faces the backyard. Our backyard is fairly large. In fact, it's so big, it doesn't even have a fence. I have no idea where our property starts and where the others begin. But surrounding our house in the back portion, it's surrounded by woods. There's other homes in the area, but still cluttered by forest. The small town is very boring. Outside of auto shops and a bunch of warehouse buildings, there's nothing else out here but flat land and woods. So these noises at first were just like anything else you would hear outside. Crickets, toads, maybe a bird from time to time. But the sounds were different. They made the sounds of crunchy noises, like something heavy was walking around out back. For a while, I was just ignoring it, thinking it was your average everyday raccoon or a coyote. But sometime that night is when I heard the howl that changed my mind. It wasn't a howl of coyotes running around trying to find some scrap to eat for the night. It wasn't the sound of a big bad wolf. I've heard them before too. Not where I live, but, you know, from movies. This howl sounded very guttural and deep. The bass in its voice was something I can't even try to replicate. It was so loud. It was clear as day. It was somewhere off close to the house. If it wasn't, it had one hell of a set of lungs on him. That got my attention. Putting my fried bologna sandwich down on the table, I stood up from my computer desk and peered outside. Curiosity killed the cat. In my case, it could have killed me. My eyes were not adjusted to the darkness, as I was inside a fully lit bedroom doing homework. I peered around from left to right, up and down and all around to see absolutely nothing at all, at first. When I was just about to give up and sit back at my desk, I heard a snapping noise somewhere off in the distance on the right-hand side of the backyard. That's when it got my attention. Peering through the trees was this black silhouette that I could only describe as a dog, but it was hiding behind a big bark tree, and it seemed to be on its back legs. I would say it was definitely on its back hind legs. The craziest thing about it, though, was its eyes. The thing's eyes were glowing in the dark. There was no light outside and the back porch wasn't even turned on, 
so there was no light around to even get those eyes to have a reflection like you do see on some cats and other animals. He only kept himself visible for a few seconds, just long enough for me to catch a glimpse before disappearing behind the bark tree behind some brush behind it. I don't know what the hell it wants, but I feel like it wanted to get my attention. Or why would you go through all that trouble to get me to come look outside the window? Peek out, let me get a glimpse of you, and then disappear. I don't know what the whole purpose of that was for. I was completely paranoid as I went back to do my homework for the rest of that night. I wrapped everything else up. I did tell my family what I had seen the following morning, but they didn't believe a word I said. They told me I was just tired and I probably just saw a coyote. But coyotes don't have red glowing eyes. Back when I was a kid in 2015, I went camping in my grandparents' RV with them in the late spring, right before summer was about to begin. I was basically raised by my grandparents, as my father was never in the picture and my mom had recently passed away. My grandparents were the prime example of a great marriage, an everlasting marriage, as this camping trick in particular was their 53rd anniversary. My grandmother was actually the one that enjoyed the camping the most. My grandfather always spent most of his time in the garage. Even at his old age, he was still working on something. But he was never the type of person that liked to leave home. He was a homebody, and that's just the way he's always been. My grandparents owned a decent-sized RV. It had a bed in the back and also a couch, and pretty much for the most part a kitchen. I was the oldest out of 11 different grandchildren, but I was always the one that liked to spend time with them the most. A lot of it had to do with not having my parents around as much as they should have been, but they were both like second parents to me, and I loved them dearly. For their anniversary, my grandmother wanted to go camping in their RV. Not a very typical request. Most people would like to go to a beach resort, get a regular hotel in general somewhere in a big city, maybe like New York or Miami. But not my grandma. She liked the outdoors. And my grandfather wasn't about to complain because one, they already owned the RV, and two, it was only about an hour away from their house. So when they initially told me about the weekend getaway, I was happy for them, but they both insisted that I went along with them. They trusted me to be alone at the house. I'm not terribly sure why they wanted me to come with them. Maybe just for company. I mean, I was really close with my grandma after all. We would play this dice game called 10,000, which is something that my uncle taught my grandmother when he was locked up in jail years back or we would play some Uno or Yahtzee. We always liked to spend time with each other and drink Pepsi. They let me take that Friday off of school. That way, they could have two consecutive days to go camping in the RV. When we first arrived over at the campsite, there was barely anybody there. We had gotten there bright and early. That way, we had plenty of time to set up without having to rush anything. Once everything was set up, we had an early lunch and we just relaxed around the river. The RV spot that my grandpa had got, it faced the water. It was beautiful. There was one of those circular metal fire pits right there as well. And my grandfather went to go purchase some firewood for that night, while me and my grandma just finished up our sandwiches watching the water. I don't remember anything else really going on that day, the first day at least. That night, we ate dinner and we just relaxed around the campfire and went to sleep. That's about all. The following day is when all shit hit the fan. Excuse my French. I don't recall what my grandparents were doing at the time, but they were preoccupied and I was kind of getting bored. I told them I was just going to walk around, maybe find some hiking trails and just go on a little adventure of some sort. I didn't own a cell phone back then, so there really wasn't terribly too much for me to do. The campground was beautiful. I've camped with them in their RV multiple times, but this one was really different. I actually think I preferred this place due to having the river right next to the campsite. 
It was just so nice to listen to at night. After wandering around the campsite, I eventually did come across a small narrow trail. It was far off on the northern side and I figured why the hell not. So I went inside. The trail was narrow. It looked like no one has walked on this trail in months. Maybe nobody has noticed it for a long time. Or maybe someone didn't make it. Maybe something else made the trail. I remember thinking to myself, giggling around. I was 13. I just let my imagination go to work as I was having fun, picking up a decent-sized stick and swinging it around like a sword. I remember walking for quite a while. It was in the early afternoon, so there was plenty of sunshine left for me to get back. The deeper I went, the colder it became. Now it was spring, and it was about to be summer, so at this point, the weather was no longer cold. But the deeper that I went into this trail, the colder it got, but the more darker and dense everything seemed to become. And eventually, I got bored there too. It felt like the trail just went on and on, winding corner after winding corner, to no end. Eventually, I gave up and turned around and started walking back towards camp. My attention span was literally 10 minutes, maybe 15 before I gave up. At that point, after turning back around, I had a good 15 minutes, maybe a 20 minute walk back. It really just depended on my pace. But while I was heading back, I had to take a pee. I figured nobody was around. It didn't seem like nobody even knew about this trail to begin with. So I just whipped it out right then and there on the dirt trail and peed. After giving it a good shake or two, I whipped it back inside and that's when I heard it. This guttural growl coming from behind me. It almost sounded like someone with an upset stomach times 1000. I jolted back around to see nothing. At the time, I thought I was just hearing things. Maybe it was my own stomach. Maybe I was hungry for some lunch. I didn't pay it any mind. I just continued on walking back towards the entrance of the campground. As I continued my trek back, I started hearing these weird snapping noises again from behind me. Every time I would turn around and look, I would never see a thing. Time after time, I would hear the snapping noises and the guttural sounds, and every time that I would hear it, it sounded like it was getting louder. Something was following me. At that point, I was starting to pick up the pace, as I could see the opening to the campsite up ahead. As I was approaching near the entrance to get to the main site where other people were camping at, that's when I heard a loud voice scream out to me but I didn't see anyone. Hey! Kid, are you alright? Someone from the campsite had noticed that I was on the trail. I replied back in response. Yeah. I'm on the trail heading back. It's kind of weird back here. As soon as I finished that sentence, I heard this crack sound that sounded like it was right behind me. I spun around. I didn't see anything. Then, something shifted in the bushes to my left. I turned my head in a swift motion to see this giant dog creature running off. I literally saw it for like one second. It was probably about 15 feet away from me in the brush and it disappeared as soon as I turned my head. It was a dog. That I do remember. But the weirdest thing, though, is it was taller than I was. I've never seen any dog bigger than me.